Men and women that are trying to improve their health may be inclined to try a ketogenic diet because keto has been thought to improve well, epilepsy outcomes, diabetes, polycystic ovary syndrome, and a variety of other conditions. So why not measures like blood sugar, cholesterol, and others? Well, in this content, we'll be diving into a detailed study to see what effects there might be. So stay tuned. Learn Your Body, a science-based education. In this study, the researchers recruited 42 individuals, of which 31 were women, that were healthy, young to middle-aged, normal weight, and the study was a single arm design, meaning the researchers only measured a before and after keto comparison. So it worked like this. The participants had their health measures taken for the various health metrics we are interested in, like cholesterol, and then they were placed on an energetically unrestricted ketogenic diet where they consumed almost 72% dietary fat, of which 28% was saturated, 22% protein, and almost 7% carbohydrate. After six weeks of being on this ketogenic diet, they had their health metrics rechecked and the researchers compared the before versus the after. And that's it. So after six weeks, what did the researchers find? Let's look at metabolism first. Resting metabolism, so the largest portion that makes up total metabolism along with physical activity and eating metabolism decreased slightly after the ketogenic diet. Predictably, the source of energy used by the body switched to far more fat substrate reliant, which of course makes sense considering the highly elevated consumption of dietary fat. But how about weight though? Well, even with a slight reduction in resting metabolism, there was a slight reduction in body weight, which was made up of decreased body fat, but also reduced fat-free mass, like muscle, according to one measure. However, a different measure of the same metrics showed only a reduction in body fat. All right, so slight reductions in body weight, some divergent results and what made up that weight loss, uh, that depends on the measurement technique, which we'll address shortly. But first, let's discuss some of the immunity-related aspects and some of the health markers. If we look at the blood sugar measures, we see a slight reduction in blood sugar, with a trend toward a significant decline in triglycerides. Yet in measures of blood cholesterol, there was an increase in all measured forms of blood cholesterol, high, low density lipoproteins, as well as total levels. Second, let's look a bit at some of the blood markers for immunity and blood clotting. When looking at leukocytes, which are a type of white blood cell that is part of the immune system, there was no effect, no change from the ketogenic diet. However, when turning our attention to thrombocytes, also known as platelets, which help with the clotting process, there was a reduction. However, in measures of red blood cell count, there were more red blood cells than before the ketogenic diet. Interesting, but what does that all mean? Well, if we circle back and attempt to understand the reduction in metabolism, that may actually be due to a reduction in a key hormone known as thyroid hormone. As the researchers showed, there was a reduction in the most active version of the thyroid hormone over the six weeks. As for the switch to a more fat-based metabolism, well, that seems like a no-brainer considering little carbohydrates were coming into the body and the body adapted by switching to a more fat-based metabolism to use up the high dietary fat influx. As for the changes in body weight, even in an unrestricted ketogenic diet, the increased fat consumption does allow for the elevation of ketones from the liver, which acts as a block on hunger in the brain. As for the discrepancy in the measures of body fat and fat-free mass, likely the drops in fat-free mass were water-based, hence why one measure showed a reduction and the other did not, since one may be more sensitive to shifts in water, which is largely found in fat-free mass. Ultimately, this is just an educated speculation on my end, but this is a plausible explanation and likely means that the weight loss is from body fat and water weight, not actual muscle loss. Finally, shifting our focus to the health markers, as I've mentioned in other content across several other studies, reductions in blood sugar are likely mediated by a drastic drop in carbohydrate intake, since the liver doesn't produce as much blood sugar, glucose, as that garnered from the consumption of carbohydrates. Also, the loss of weight can reduce blood sugar, so a two-pronged reason. Secondly, reductions in triglycerides and increased HDL, high-density lipoprotein cholesterol, could be intertwined as 
triglycerides are cleaved by enzymes known as lipoprotein lipases, cleaving triglycerides for packaging into HDL particles. So that's one possibility at least. And third, there were overall increases in blood cholesterol, which may be due to elevated saturated fat in the diet and elevated dietary cholesterol, or well, both, since saturated fat is thought to reduce the sensitivity of the liver to detect blood cholesterol. Finally, the other blood measures, it seems that on the single measure of immune cell number, there was no difference, so nothing to report there. However, the decreases in blood cells uh, like thrombocytes and increases in red blood cells were unexplained by the researchers. This could have something to do with the metabolic switch to a fat-based metabolism or possibly an interaction with the elevated ketones or some other factor. Well, more needs to be investigated here. Overall, this means that this ketogenic diet, higher in saturated fats, reduces resting metabolism, body weight, body fat, blood sugar, and triglycerides, but increases all forms of measured blood cholesterol and red blood cell count in normal weight, young and middle-aged, healthy men and women. If you'd like even more evidence, be sure to check out the follow-up content that dives deeper into the topic or watch my final verdict where I put it all together for you in one convenient video. Speak to you then. Bye.